handily leaving a link back to your blog on every comment, suddenly people are going to pick up on it and say, hey, you know what? This guy's right. He's got some interesting points. I'd like to see what, what he and his team are saying over at their place. And yeah, I might actually consider hiring them for my next gig. Okay? So there's just a couple of simple ways to start thinking about it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, if I could, I just wanted to tag on, I was just listening. In a smaller company, you have the same functions as any larger company. However, you have fewer people to perform those functions. So the challenge really becomes greater. And the pure entrepreneur, I differentiate between the pure entrepreneur and the entrepreneur, really has to understand that he or she must empower and enable and build that infrastructure, really letting go to do what needs to get done. However, that is frightening. Functionality really becomes an issue. Not only is the brand important, never, ever forget about the brand promise and what keeps that customer coming back again and again and again. I think it's important to recognize the relationship between the brand and the brand promise as a as identified in Chapter 9 of the Seven Successful Rockefeller Habits, if you, if you haven't read that book, it really is. I'm just trying to think of the author now. My question to you is uh, really relate to, you talked a little bit about the succession plan and continuation and moving on. The, the function that you currently perform, when, when you were brought in, was that function did the function exist or is that bringing you on? Someone recognized the need for that function and then they brought you in or in a sense you were you were driving in a sense. I kind of look at your role as being the champion. And right. I, I guess that's the question. Yeah, I, the, the leadership team at Ford recognized that Ford needed to uh, start to get on board with digital communications and social media to a greater degree than it already had. Uh, to hear our vice president talk about it, he says, uh, up until then, Ford viewed social media as a hobby. Mm -hmm. There was no strategic push behind it. Okay? So the role was created, and then they sought out the right person for it. And, well, they found me, mm -hmm. whether that's the right person or not. <laughs> I'm sure the but um, the, the first order of business, in addition to keeping things going uh, and, and accelerating the, the process, was to form a strategy, a strategy that was consistent with our business goals and with our broader uh, communications and marketing goals. Okay? And that in and of itself kind of set the tone for where we've been going. Okay? To your point about uh, succession and you know broadening the team, I mean, that's one of my biggest uh, disappointments uh, over my first year at Ford, is that I was the only person in Ford Motor Company responsible for social media. Okay? We had two agencies that we worked with that were arms and legs, but in terms of actual dialogue and getting out there and, you know, doing all the stuff I just mentioned, you know, that fell on my shoulders. And, and if I had to do it over again, I would totally do it differently. And I wish I had the wherewithal to, you know, to have a, a really deep bench uh, with some of our, well, really every other company in the business. <laughs> <laughs> um, automotive and non-automotive alike. Um, you know, and I do have an additional person on staff now. Um, I would have advocated for that earlier on. It's just that, you know, we got bogged down in so many things going on with the industry and uh, success we were trying to achieve that it didn't allow that to happen. So I can't understate enough how important that is to have that team function in place. And what we're doing now is we are building a process by which we can educate as many people across the company, not only in communication, but across the company, that wish to be digital ambassadors. Okay? Hope you're taking notes. <laughs> um, we have to I can argue that you're taking notes from me, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're friends, it's okay. <laughs> Christopher is actually one of the reasons I'm, uh, I, I moved to, uh, to Michigan. Uh, we knew each other uh, in previous life when he was still at IBM, uh, and I was, I think I was with uh, the advertising agency at the time. Um, but I, I actually sought out his counsel and asked him about what it was like out here. And we are, I mean, we are friends, um, and, and we turn to each other for counsel from time to time. So 
you know, even though we have these, uh, <laughs> you know, these little competitive streaks going, and I think that will continue. There's a uh, great deal of. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, great There's a great deal of, uh, of affection and camaraderie because I think there's there's, there's two parallel notions here. Uh, just as uh, when Ford was in Washington with uh, Chrysler and GM last December in front of uh, the committees, we were there to support the industry. All right, and I think the more we can all learn collectively, no matter what companies we work for, the more we can push along you know, the digital industry, the social media uh, component, the better off we'll all be. The degree to which we can collaborate and learn from each other and, um, and help each other, as competitive as we may be, I think the better off we'll be and the better off all our customers will be. Okay? So, did I get to everything that you Yeah, asked? yeah, my only comment was is that I had a chance to meet Emily Morello uh, and do a one-on-one -on -one with him. And when you, uh, what an engaging guy. And I happen to have a, a daughter that works for Ford, and I met with him. I just talked with him briefly and, mm -hmm. and said, you know, um, our daughter works for Ford, works in the Chicago area, and we're really proud of her and had things that she does. She's only been in home for 10 years. The next morning, our daughter, sends me an email. What did you say to Alan Malala? <laughs> I, I got an email. Now that is power. I mean, here, here's somebody that is orchestrating and providing leadership at the level that he's providing. That absolutely knocked me over. Now I'm going to do that. A week after that, I get this package from UPS at the office. And we're 100 years before and DVD. Thanks for letting us know about your dog. You know, handwritten, no, handwritten note from Alan Malala. You know, you know when, you, when you think about leadership, when you think about quality of an individual, you know, they're paying the guy big bucks, but I'll tell you, he, he really makes a big difference. Well, he is, and you know, I just want to comment on that. I think everything you've observed is very consistent with what we see uh, internally. Um, and again, this notion of associating Alan Mulally's brand with the Ford brand is an interesting one. I mean, we could have, in our latest advertising campaign, turned to him and said, let, let's bottle this guy up. He's like the guy next door. He does all this personal stuff. We love him. You know, we want the whole world to know about him. We did. You know, we took a very different tactic. You know, I think uh, Monday you're going to see on television the first of our 15 second spots. Because evidently attention span their social work can't be 30 second spots. Um, where we're featuring real people, people like you. Again, that notion of trust, very consistent with our social media strategy in commercials saying whatever it is they want to say. Same as our Fiesta agents have been doing for nearly six months now, saying whatever it is they want to say about the brand. It's so free. It's so different from what corporate America has known. And Alan Mulally is ostensibly different than any CEO I have ever had an experience to interact with or read about or learn from. And it's so refreshing. And I I don't look forward to the day when we lose him because, you know, he's, he'll have a limited tender for it naturally. Uh, and that's, again, why we need to think beyond just the, just that one individual and think about how we actually uh, function as a company as well. So. Yes, sir. I think those of us who are here uh, understand that social media is about the conversation, but I'd be curious to understand, as you were within for advocating for social media, how did you respond to the people uh, that may not have understood it and said, well, how does this affect the bottom line? I don't get it. Um, there are remarkably few people like that at our company. 